Welcome back, fellow explorers. I'm thrilled to have you join me for the fifth installment of Project Solara, where we'll plunge into the mysterious depths of Verdantara's deep seas. Driven by the incredible biodiversity we've encountered so far, our journey continues with the astonishing creatures that have evolved to thrive in the abyss. First up, we have the Thermophyter, descendants of the Purpurophyter. These fascinating organisms, now a pale shade of purple, have embraced a life near hydrothermal vents, utilizing chemosynthesis. With remarkable heat resistance, they've adapted to the extreme conditions of the deep sea, creating a unique niche for themselves. Chemosynthesis is a process by which organisms generate energy using chemicals rather than sunlight. The Thermophyter offer a new opportunity for descendants of the Serpenticeptoros, giving rise to the Luminiserpents. With sharpened pincers, these creatures feed on Thermophyter, their dorsal fins now serving as sacs containing bioluminescent microbes. Their bioluminescence aids in navigation and communication, creating a mesmerizing display in the inky darkness. These agile creatures grow to a size of up to one foot, and live for one year. Bioluminescence is the production and emission of light by living organisms. Near the hydrothermal vents, descendants of the forolithids have evolved into the majestic thermolithids. Growing up to a meter tall, they can retract their tentacles into their shells for protection while feeding on marine snow and bits of food. These graceful creatures will live up to two years, and will engage in broadcast spawning, contributing to the vibrant ecosystem thriving around the vents. As life around the hydrothermal vents booms, a new predator might take advantage of this vibrant ecosystem. Descendants of the Coralithids, the Chimeraliths are stationary predators that use the lights on the ends of their tentacles to attract prey. These creatures also utilize bioluminescent microbes to produce light, but these predators don't want to be constantly visible so they may furl their tentacles inwards to hide their lights when idle. These creatures may grow up to 5 feet tall and live for 10 years. As life teams around the hydrothermal vents, descendants of the Aqualithrax take a different evolutionary path. Meet the Abyssothrax, deep-sea giants that have internalized their beaks and feed on the abundant marine snow. With self-generated bioluminescence, these creatures communicate through unique light patterns which help them find a mate. They will live up to 5 years and can reach lengths of up to 3.5 meters. Deep Sea Gigantism, or Abyssal Gigantism is the tendency for species of invertebrates and other deep sea dwelling animals to be larger than their shallow water relatives. Descendants of the Stellar Invisopter may also call the depths home. The Stella Luminari have evolved into semi-transparent beings adapted for life in the deep sea. These curious creatures, reaching sizes of up to 3 inches, have developed a unique way of staying hidden, their transparency allows them to stay hidden as they feed on anything that comes their way. With chemoreceptors located on the ends of their tentacles, they rely minimally on vision, navigating the abyss with unique efficiency. With the abundance of prey, a new predator emerges from the deep, the Tempelaphrides, descendants of the Stellapharids. With specialized tentacles, including a bioluminescent lure which is used to draw prey in, two robust tentacles used to force prey into the mouth, and one small tentacle to force the prey even further into the mouth. They reach lengths of up to one meter and can live as long as two years. These hunters use their unique adaptations to capture prey in the darkness of the abyss, demonstrating the incredible diversity of life in the deep sea. A bioluminescent lure is a light-producing structure used by certain organisms to attract prey. Finally, we have the centilithids, descendants of the turtilithids. These creatures can grow up to one foot and drag themselves along the sea floor with their body adapting to a single direction of movement. With a cluster of chemoreceptors on a raised appendage aiding in the detection of whale falls, hundreds may congregate at these events. As more active scavengers, they may even evolve blue blood to support their new lifestyle, living up to one year. A whale fall is a nutrient-rich food source for deep-sea organisms resulting from the carcass of a whale or other large creature sinking to the ocean floor. 
the wonders of Verdantara's deep seas have unfolded before us, showcasing the incredible adaptability and diversity of life in this alien world. Join us in the next episode as we explore the freshwater ecosystems of Verdantara and encounter the unique organisms that live there. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment with your thoughts and suggestions for future episodes. The future of Project Solara is vast, and our exploration has only just begun.